Hey guys, welcome to the latest installment of American Cycle Sports Speed Lab Series. Today we have a special guest. It is JT Burke, right? That's right. That's right, JT from Breezer Bikes. And look what he brought down to American Cycle Sport. Not even available yet. We got one in-house. Uh, first of all, JT, tell us a little bit about what you do there. Well, I'm the brand manager for Breezer, uh, and I've been the product manager for the past three model years. And this bike is a special bike for me because it's been a long time in the works for us. Mm -hmm. um, when Breezer joined forces with ASI and the other brands with ASI, it allowed Joe to bring back his beloved mountain bikes to the world. Uh, and when we laid out that product roadmap, full suspension was the target all along. And so we're finally there. This bike, uh, the new Repack, which is a 160 millimeter travel, 27.5 inch wheel, all mountain bike, uh, is two years in the making. And I'm super, super happy to be able to talk about it and get people to ride it. Cool. If you don't know Breezer Bikes, Breezer Bikes is the oldest living mountain bike company on the planet. So, uh, founded in 1977, they're also one of the only bicycles you'll see in the Smithsonian Institution. So, they're, they're the, the, they started it all. So, we owe Joe Breeze a huge debt of gratitude. But let's talk about the bike. Sure. All right. So, this, which repack is this? Uh, this is the repack team. So, it's our top model. Uh, that means it's an XT level spec, full XT with uh, Fox front, shock, front fork and rear shock with the Kashima coating. Nice. Okay, so this is the big deal right here, the M-Link. We're going to zoom in here a little bit so you can look at that. Oh, here we go. This is why this bike took so long oh, to come out. There we go. Yes, this was a, a big project for us. We wanted to come out with something that we felt could improve upon the current designs, and uh, we worked with what I consider the world's leading kinematics experts, Soto Group, uh, they're based out of Santa Cruz, and they uh, work with Joe and I to come up with this M-Link suspension system. And M-Link stands for mid-link, so it's, uh, it's a mid-pivot. We place that critical chainstay pivot right in the center of the chainstay. And this does a, a, a couple cool things. One, uh, it allows you to have a shorter chainstay because uh, with a short link, dual short link bikes, you've got to have that pivot in front of the rear wheel. And so uh, when you put the pivot past the wheel line, it allows you to shorten up the RC. Nice. The other cool thing it does is by moving uh, the chainstay pivot from back by the rear axle like a horse link bike, uh, it allows you to triangulate the rear end. So you have a very rigid, stiff uh, suspension system, which is not possible with a horse link bike because you can't connect the seat stay and chainstay. And then the other thing which we were super excited about was uh, the, you can see this link here is a longer link than those dual short link bikes uh, like DW Link, VPP, uh, the Yeti switch system. Those short link bikes mean that, that those bearings have to rotate a larger amount than uh, this bearing does for the same amount of rear wheel travel. And that's a big deal. This bearing rotates about three degrees for 160 millimeters of rear wheel travel. Um, and if you compare that to a dual short link bike, that bearing's rotating more and it's accelerating and decelerating quite quickly, especially when you're hitting stuff in a row. And that adds to uh, a lot of bearing wear, and it also adds to those bearings packing up inside there and uh, not being as smooth as you'd want. So one of the great features on the M-Link system is it's a super, super smooth system, but it's also super stiff with the rigid rear triangle. Very nice, very nice. Now another thing that been you don't hear too much about is the nature of these new pivots. So you want to tell us about those? Sure. This is a four bar system, and one of the things that we really focused on was making the rear end as rigid as possible because you do all this work on fine-tuning your kinematics and if you've got a rear end that's flexing as it goes through the travel, uh, it kind of throws all that work you did out the window because the bike doesn't behave like you intended it. So we focused on these two main pivots. These are 15 millimeter through axles. They're hollow aluminum through axles and uh, we use a collet system on here that's tapered and I'll take this apart so you can see it. Um, this part's cool. Check this out. So this is an M8 fastener, and it's got a taper washer. Uh, Here we go. See that? Attached to it. See how that is nice and tapered? So you can see this is a hollow through axle in aluminum, uh, 15 millimeter diameter, and you take a 10 millimeter Allen key, uh, and you can back this out just like you would uh, on a front, front axle. So, so it works just like your 15 mil through axle on your fork. 
So a super rigid system. You uh, you tighten this down. Um, no need to over tighten. No, you don't, and I'll show you why. Because of the collet system, uh, you can have the load go in like that, mm -hmm. and then you take this fastener with a taper washer, and there's a taper fit here, uh, and the axle has collets on it. So when you tighten this down, you've now expanded that, so you've got a load in two planes here and here, which makes for a really rigid system that doesn't need as much uh, torque on either of those fasteners to stay tight. Do you get that? So what happens is when you tighten that bolt, it expands both sides of the axle equally. No need to over tighten. Everything's locked in place. But the best part is a bike you can work on. None of that non-serviceable pivots, press fit, all that stuff. That a lot of that in the past few years has uh, gone away. And it's quite frustrating as a bike shop mechanic uh, when somebody brings their big fancy bike in and, uh, uh, and you can't work on it. You know, you've got to send it in. And uh, Breezer's, you know, put a lot of thought into this. It, and it allows you to have your bike. It allows the do-it-yourselfer to take better care of his bike. You take better care of your bike. It's going to last longer. You're going to enjoy it more. And it's going to cost you less to own. So that's an awesome system. Very cool. Thanks. So, very good. Another thing about this bike that is has uh, sparked a little bit of uh, praise is its geometry. It's not your standard tw uh, 27.5 uh, trail bike. It's not the standard trail geometry. And that was a nice thing to hear because I've always had this love-hate relationship with 29er geometry. Uh, I thought that uh, the way it started out was the philosophy behind how they created 29ers was a little bit off right from the gate. And it's nice to see that after a decade and a half, they're starting to come around. And Joe nailed it with the trail geometry. Trail geometry... You know, it used to be you get on your trail bike and you would uh, let go of the bars and the things would just flop because everything was so slacked out. Well, uh, it's nice to hear that, that he brought he tightened up the, he brought the rear wheel back or the front wheel back underneath the rider with the okay. geometry and the rear and the rear wheel in too. Um, nice. We tried to focus on a very short chainstay because with big wheels you automatically have a longer wheelbase. So a 29 inch bike, the axles are about 30 millimeters higher than 26 inch. Right. Uh, and this is in relation to the BB. So the BB is the same height, the axles are higher, and this is what Joe calls riding in a valley of confidence. So you've got these walls protecting you from uh, going over the bars or going or wheeling back when you're climbing a hill. So those higher fulcrum points, they exist for 27.5 inch wheels too. Uh, this wheel diameter is effectively one inch higher than 26 inch. Mm -hmm. So you've got those same walls built up, which also means that it's a longer bike. And so you want to take advantage of that increased stability and bigger wheel by trying to shorten the wheelbase so you get better handling. Uh, and this means trying to make a short RC. The chainstay length on this bike is 438 millimeters. That's short. My custom frames are 440 and 420. So for a full suspension to have something like that is uh, very impressive. And then the head tube angle is 68 degrees. And uh, we didn't want to totally slack this bike out like you're seeing with a lot of 26 inch all mountain bikes because the big wheel allows you to have a lot more traction. And you can have the same uh, trail, mechanical trail on the ground, even with the head tube in tucked in a little more. So we have a, a shorter wheelbase. Uh, it allows you to weight the front end a little more and get that tire to bite as you go through a turn and not be pushing and washing out. See, and that's a key point. A lot of people in the uh, past few years have come to the shop and they've talked about, can't get my front wheel to stick, can't get my front wheel to stick. because, uh, And we look at the bikes and they think they got to bring shorter stem, shorter stem, and the bikes are slacked out. It's actually counterintuitive because they think that they're too far over the front fork or too far over the front wheel, and so there's too much weight, so it's pushing. When actually what's happening is there's not enough weight, so the tire's not sticking. So this solves that push issue, so you should have a real nice, you know, you should get great traction, uh, excellent steering, and uh, none of the ill side effects of uh, standard trail bikes. So, yeah. cool. And, and guys, this is going to come in how many models? Uh, there's three models. There's a repack team, pro and expert. Uh, from $28.99 all the way up to $43.99. This is the team edition. The entry-level bike is a Diore spec with Dior XT rear derailleur. It's still 2x10 and uh, X-Fusion front and rear suspension. The X-Fusion stuff, I looked at that at Interbike, and that stuff's very impressive. So uh, the, you'll look forward to some, seeing some nice things from X-Fusion on a lot of different brands, not just Breezer. You'll see it out there uh, all over the place because uh, Brian Lopes don't ride crap, I'll tell you that much. So. <laughs>
Well, thank you very much, man. I appreciate your time. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, I'm just glad you guys got to ride it. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. So we're gonna have this here for a little bit. It's got to leave the shop for a couple of days, and then it's gonna come back, and I get to go take it out and get it dirty. So that's one of the bonuses of uh, uh, having one of these here bike shops. Um, they are on order, so the availability is what. So let's talk to Steve. Steve is our our breezer representative for Colorado. We're so what are we talking about? Uh, late December, early January. Late December, early January. What a novel concept. A 2014 bike coming out in 2014. 2014. That's a nice thing to say every <laughs> once in a while. So. So, okay, cool. Thanks for your time. Come see the Breezer Bikes at American Cycle Sport, and uh, we'll talk at you later. Bye. See you next time. See you.